Oh! Ah! So, Michael, what kind of software are you looking for this week? Oh, it's just some open source, you know, 3D imaging, special effects. Something like this. Yeah. Something like that, or uh, maybe this. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and you try. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, I think I have just the thing for you. Really? Yeah. What is it? Can, I, can we get to it? Yeah, yeah. All right, in fact, uh, here, why don't you take the teleportation stick? Uh, yeah, take the teleportation stick and uh, go ahead and get to the studio. All right, just remember to keep your head down. Yeah. Great. How do I get back? So two, we're talking two. about, as you probably got from that opening skit, open source VFX software and stop motion animation software. Oh yeah. You ready for this? Let's do it. Let's get into it. So yes, VFX software and stop motion animation. Let's go ahead and knock out stop motion animation first. Yeah. Because this is, a, right. this is a good little subject and I love stop motion animation. It's very near and dear to my heart. Because that's <laughs> that's really what I started off doing when I started filmmaking, but I was not exactly using a computer. And also, too, uh, stop motion is great if you have a really if you don't have good soft good camera. Yep. Good uh, a good computer even. Um, it's not maybe it's not fast. A stop motion can take any processor. Mm -hmm. it, it really, like this would be ideal for me for stop motion animation because it's a small computer. I can take it anywhere. Um, actually, what would really be ideal is a netbook. Because those are tiny. But, um, or you can even use a larger uh, computer system. It doesn't matter what you have, yep. but this is something that you can use some basic stuff on. Yep. And uh, while Mike is talking, I'm going to show you on uh, the Ubuntu Studio, after you download it, where it's going to be located and bring it up. Yep. Okay, so um, don't open it yet because I have to tell you exactly what the program is for or software for stop motion. It is open source called Stop Motion. Hmm. Very, very intriguing name. I'm not quite sure why they would choose that name. It has nothing to do with the subject of what it does, but it's called Stop Motion. Hmm. Okay, um, it's open very source and everything. Um, yeah. You can get it for free. So go ahead and open up Stop Motion, and this is a great little app. It is the best stop motion program I found for Linux by far. Um, and it can take um, really any uh, camera input, just as long as your camera can actually be put through USB, um, and, you know, it, like add input into a computer. For most instances, you could probably get away with a webcam. Now this one is uh, standard resolution, 640 by 480. They have HD ones that would be great to have. Before you know it, we're gonna have 4K webcams. I cannot wait for that. That's almost hard to believe. I know. I think within two years, we're gonna have 4K webcams. We know the GoPro, the new GoPro is coming out, and that's 4K. Yep. 4K I mean, is so on nice. a GoPro, that tiny little camera. Yep. I mean, that's real. Okay, so we can just plug in our uh, webcam, and then activate the camera. There's a little button to activate the camera. Um, Wrong camera. Yep. So uh, go to file. This is a very simple thing to fix. Uh, Try, let me see, we need to find the user preferences and stuff. So go to edit, no settings, configure stop motion. Okay, now the video device, we want to be USB 2.0, and there we go. And apply. hit apply. Then close it. Okay, now try to uh, turn on and off the camera. Okay, so we're going to have to just completely, uh, oh, nope. We're gonna have to restart the program. Um, that's happened sometimes. So close and reopen. So it's probably gonna be cut out. Yeah, we should have had this plugged in before. <laughs> but um, so uh, webcam is really one of the best ways to do it. If you have a good lighting setup, you can make a. Oh, there we go. See, 
you can have a good lighting setup and make a webcam look as good as anything you really need. Especially something like that really nice Logitech 1080 HD camera. It's a really nice one. Um, so yes, get a good webcam and you can do some great stop motion. So what are some of the wonderful features about stop motion? Now, you've never heard of this program, really, and... No, not really. I just know, you know, the basic of stop motion. It's like you... I'm right here. It could be Lego. You see a lot in Legos, you know. Legos is very here, popular for that. take a picture. You move, you take a picture. You move, you take a picture. And then after a while, it just comes into a movement. Yep. Now, and this program, it's... It's incredible. You know, I'm used to just, you know, taking pictures and yep. just going with it. This is different. What are what's what's up with these uh, the inter like? Explain okay, so it. let's go ahead and explain this interface a little bit. Okay, um, you see where it says number of images and there's a little bar, right here. Yeah, go ahead and yeah, that's it right there. Okay. Um, don't move it. Just go ahead and leave it there. All right. This is for something called ghosting. I love ghosting, especially when it comes to stop motion animation. What is ghosting? Ghosting is where it will show the previous frame uh -huh. on top of the current thing that you're actually viewing. So let's go ahead and make an example with this uh, flashlight okay let's go ahead and take a photo you can do this by clicking the space bar uh, just yeah just hit the space bar and it, as you can see up here on the top bar go ahead and wiggle over it so be very dramatic yeah right there you can see we have got a new image now as you can see here if I ever put my hand in front <gasps> why does it look like a ghost I because it's ghosting so as you can see if I move my flashlight forward I can see the last frame and the current what's going on with my camera. So I can see exactly how much I moved. And especially for someone like me who came from, you have to really rely on just your image, your your mind. This is so helpful because you can actually see what your last movement was. Yeah, this is great because if you really think about it, it's it's just saving all, all the only thing that's ghosting is the is the new image is what it looks like. This is awesome. Now, what up now what's going on with with this with you can actually uh, tell it how many frames you want it to ghost so okay. go ahead and uh, in, yeah increase the frames um, so see like right there that uh, is three so it's showing the current plus uh, however many you want so go, go go back to three right there one more there we go it's showing three frames the current one any movement that goes on within the camera and then it's showing the past two frames so you can see how much your progress has been um, most of the time though you're probably going to need just one frame yeah. so here take it back down to one frame and so as you can see I mean you just move it a little bit to the point that you want and it works great now what happens if you find out that you do this I've done this so many times with other programs that I can't really see um, exactly what it is I'm doing so I start to move it, and as I'm taking my hand away, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to do stop motion real fast. So as I'm taking my hand away, I all of a sudden go, boom. <gasps> Uh-oh, my hand's in the shot. Yeah. So it's all of a sudden, boom, you got a hand. And that's where you get a lot of the cut stuff in your stop animation. Yep, that's not good at all. How do we remove this? Just simply hover over, right click. Oh, it's, sorry, it's different for this. Okay, you can remove the selected frame. And the selected one is the one where the number, the uh, color is, infer is inverted from the rest of them. See how it's white background with a black letter? Yes. That's which one is selected. So um, so now we don't have that frame. So we can just continue our stop motion animation. So it's in the right spot. We can just continue our stop motion as normal. Very simple. Um, now, explain to me what, uh, you know, while we're at it, I guess this one right here is so you can add frames. Yes. Um, you can add, you can basically duplicate the current frame um, to make several, frame, uh, several frames within that shot of it. Ah, okay. So basically, like um, people talking or, mm -hmm. you know, okay. And, um, Okay, um, so now let's go ahead and close up stop motion by explaining the past, last couple features. You can change the FPS, uh, frames per second. And this is great because then um, I can set it anywhere from 150 billion to 1. Okay, now one thing you cannot do in stop motion is you cannot do this and that frame point 
whatever. It has to be a flat frame. Yep, and as you can see there, which he's getting ready to do, uh, go ahead and change the FPS back to 20, uh, 24. Uh, you gotta, I think you gotta use these bars. Oh, and also, um, there we go. You, uh, that is something else I forgot to mention. For ghosting, there are different types. You can see differences. It's like whenever there's a difference in the frame, you can see where that difference is, which is kind of interesting. So you can line up your past shot a lot easier. Then there's mix, which is what we've been using. And then uh, there's playback. So we can there's our entire animation right there. Going at, I'm assuming it's 24. It is 24 frames per second, which so. means we don't even have a second of animation done. Um, so that means we can actually slow it real... Yep, you can slow it very far down. And I've noticed that this is what probably a lot of people, honestly, a lot of stop motion I've seen is actually something like... A lot of them do 12 like, frames per second. Really, 12 frames? That's that's half of normal animation, and you can get it somewhat smooth. The well, best thing to do is 24. Okay. Well, honestly, it's a lot choppier than... honestly. It's very choppy at 12 frames per second. Well, even... Well, honestly, with the way it's at right now... It looks very nice, uh, stop motion. Most most stop motion on YouTube that you see is very... A lot of them are using, like, really low frames per second. It's very choppy. Um, so, yeah, we need to go ahead and close this up real quick. So, uh, very great program, relatively basic. Um, and also you have the ability to edit the current framing GIMP. I mean, I, this is just great. Um, really wonderful program. And... Uh, and one more thing I'm looking down here is what's up with this? That is your edit in GIMP. You can launch GIMP and edit something like a, a matte painting over over your uh, animation. Nice. Yeah. So that that's pretty cool. Um, so stop motion is great. I highly recommend you check it out. It is the best stop motion program I've ever used. I love it. Um, but it's only available on Linux. So you might need to get Linux. Or you could dual boot. Which I'm doing right now. Yes. If I have my way, you probably won't be dual booting for long. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep my dual boot. Yeah. Really, you do need Windows for some things internet-based. Um, but anyway, so, yes, stop motion is great. So now, let's go ahead and move on to visual effects. So what program did I find for visual effects? You ready? Wait, if you are a viewer of this show, guess before I say it. I already know. Go ahead. Blender. Boom! Blender. Blender is amazing. Go ahead and open it. Now, Ubuntu Studio comes normal with uh, 2.69. If you download Ubuntu Studio, uh, at least 14.04, um, it comes with 2.69. Um, you can update it pretty easily using sudo commands um, to be the most current release. And there will be a link in the description to this article you can see on the screen right now. Um, this is a great article for a very, very simple way to update three pseudo commands. So now we have the most current version of Blender. Um, and it's quite nice. <laughs> uh, there's some great updates with 2.71 as far as volumetrics and you know, just cycles and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what is Blender? Uh, Blender is exactly what is blender blender it's mostly known for its 3d animation capabilities it's got really good 3d animation capabilities but one of my favorite things to use it for node-based compositing there we go with that node-based compositing what exactly is node-based compositing well that's a very good question michael <laughs> i mean node-based compositing i'm doing i'm very much putting on the uh host voice but node based compositing keep it simple though yes keep it simple node based compositing uh, are you familiar with after effects of course I, I've, I've messed with it yeah okay that's layer based you okay. literally put one layer on top of another on top of another on top of another like photoshop also yeah sort of and uh, gimp and all that kind of stuff okay you work in layers um and they're going vertically whatever is at the top of the layer heap is that is what's at the top of your view um, which is actually a lot of the way it is with node-based compositing, except node-based compositing, 
has tiles and you have strings connecting them, and it's going horizontally, not vertically. Kind of like when you showed us the um, the lightsaber video. Yep. And also the um, Cyclops episode. The Cyclops episode. Yep. And you went into detail on how you did it, which those are great episodes to watch to really understand. Link in the description again. Yes, and I'm, that's where I'm learning some of my stuff too. I pretty appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, he's uh, sucking up because I'm his boss now. <laughs> but so, yes, node based compositing, I have found a lot of. You're fired. You don't pay me anyway. Oh, whatever. You can stay. But node based compositing at first may seem restricting to you, especially if you're used to layer based compositing. <laughs> Honestly, though, I have come to find so much freedom within node based compositing that I love it more than I did layer based when I was using layer based compositing. Because I used to use old programs called uh, FX Lab Pro and Composite Lab Pro. And they were great layer based compositing systems, a lot like After Effects. Okay. A much, base, much more basic, though. And I gotten very comfortable to it, but then I went over to node based compositing. I'm like, what the heck is this? I, I can't, I can't just simply do a green screen shot with light warp and all that kind of stuff. But the more I do it, the more used to it I am, and the more free I feel, because I mean it just, it's so good. Layer, uh, node based compositing really is good. In fact, uh, go ahead and open up the node based compositor. Uh, where would that be at exactly? Okay, um, this is something about Blender. It does have a slightly interesting user interface, but here's the thing. You can customize the entire interface. So if you'll come down here, you have all these different options where you got the double arrows. You have all these different options for the different views and uh, tools. Um, one we want is Node Editor. And if we come down here and go into Scenes and click Use Nodes, we now have the ability to use nodes within the node based compositor. And uh, the backdrop that you just clicked, is that like basically the background? Okay, um, bring up screencast. As you can see, this is from the Cyclops episode. Um, the backdrop is that image you see in the background. It allows you to see what it is you're working on. It, it gives you a, a, a live, active view of what it is you're doing. They're not on, they're not seeing us. Oh. But it gives you a live active view to see exactly where you are. Um, it's a viewport. A backdrop is a viewport that goes behind your nodes. And we'll get more into this in the future because we're actually going to do an episode where we're going to edit a basic scene inside of the note based compositor of Blender. So Blender is awesome. Did I mention that Blender was used on several previous shots for Captain America the Winter Soldier? Yes, you did. To you, I did. To them, I didn't. Yes, um, Captain America the Winter Soldier, relatively noticed movie. A few people liked it. Um, they used Blender for several previs shots. Previs, that's basically like um, just getting the, the basics laid out. So it's a moving the storyboard. Moving sto storyboard, okay. Which is very important actually for when you're doing a, actually a professional, like when you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it. Right. Now, I'm not sure if I should mention his name or not, but there's a man who used to work at Rhythm and Hughes. Okay. He found out about Blender while he was working with their proprietary software that's absolutely expensive and just really high-end anyway, software. Anyway, expensive. Yeah, really high-end expensive software. And he found out about Blender. He gave it a try. Now, um, he was laid off because of uh, economy and everything. Well, he's now using only Blender by choice. He can afford, he can get any software he wants, and by choice, he's using Blender for his visual effects. Um, and if you really look at some of the uh, movies and just video clips that people have used with Blender, you can get some really nice visuals out of it. Link um, in the description for Tears of Steel. Um, acting sucks, but it's still a good movie. I mean, it's, it's still pretty good. Yeah. Tears um, of Steel was a short film by the Blender Foundation. The people who actually make the software they do short films to try to grow their software. Well, this one was a live action short film to use, to try to develop their node-based compositing and live action VFX pipeline. And this entire thing was done in Blender. So link in the description for that video. 
Try that. Try to do that with any other free software. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah, any other free <laughs> software. Unbelievable. And you can get just as good of an effect out of here as many, really almost any paid software. Proof is Tears of Steel, even though the acting is terrible and the storyline is... What? Okay. Besides that. So what can you do in Blender? We've already covered the fact that you can do 3D modeling and nobody's compositing, but you can also do motion or camera tracking. You can track the movement of your camera so you can add objects, 3D objects into your live action scene, um, as you can see here. Um, then you can also do nonlinear editing. I do not like it. And if you're not familiar with nonlinear editing, uh, stay tuned for a future episode because that's going to be all about nonlinear editors, open source. Um, and we'll go over what exactly a nonlinear editor is. But it has a nonlinear editor. I don't really like it. It's very basic. It doesn't have very many features. It's very hard to do, just basic cut and crop. Um, but I think, they, I think they might start developing that a bit more in the future. But it's there if you want to use it. There are some people who prefer that. I don't know. But um, so those are all the things that Blender can do. And of course, it can do a lot more. It, it has painting capabilities, uh, you know, like image editing and stuff, masking. It, it's a great program. And if you're not familiar with it, get familiar with it. And we'll be getting more into that in later videos. Right. Um, We're going to do an entire episode just on editing in the note-based compositor. And and later on, I'll be having my own, you know, sub-channel with this, too. And Yeah, your own show? Yeah, my own show. And basically what I'll be doing is just showing you, honestly, how to do stuff with stuff around the house, like maybe even your cell phone. Yep, his show is going to be about how you can get away with so much. You can get so much with so little. Exactly, and that's really what I want to base a lot especially my early stuff is you know yeah I don't have a lot you know I don't have a camera I really don't have it well if you got a a smartphone laying around or honestly a tablet that has a camera with it which most tablets nowadays do an iPhone whatever I mean or an iPod you got a camera you can make some nice things um, and with programs like blender and everything you can make some really good visuals also and so we'll be getting more into that and also you know lighting and and all kinds of stuff so just just be sure to, to stay tuned and yeah subscribe and keep an eye out for his show coming very very soon within, yes within a week maybe two weeks something like that but so keep an eye out for his show yeah we'll, we'll try to get that out as, as, as soon as i can and right. keep you updated yep so all right, so uh, in the future episode, like we said, we're going to be doing some stuff with Blender, and uh, both of these tools are very solid. If you want to use these for almost any project that has that they actually are pertaining to, like visual effects for Blender or stop motion for, because you can't use stop motion to do image editing. Hmm. But so yes, both of these tools are very solid. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Next week we're going to be talking about nonlinear editors, so stay tuned for that episode next Tuesday. Um, remember to do the typical like, comment, subscribe, follow on, Ju on Google and Facebook. Google Plus and Facebook. Um, links below. Yes, links below. There'll be a ton of links in this episode. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I am your host, Michael Pendleton. And I'm the other host, Michael Saka. Remember, dream big, big pay small. small. Catch you next time. And do keep in mind, I'm kind of teaching you. Yes. So you want to keep in mind that you're almost like a student. I'm the dumb person that doesn't know anything. Exactly. He's finally getting it. No. No. Okay. Ready? Because right. we can get this out of the way pretty quick. Yes, in fact, I'm going to grab my webcam. And we will be back. After I get the... This is going fine. Almost there. I'm glad this is going to be cut out. Yep. Should I thought of this before. Okay.